Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the mathematical analysis of klystron amplifier. In the mathematical analysis of klystron amplifier, first we will see the velocity with which the electron travels from cathode to anode after the application of RF input voltage and later we can calculate the drift space between the two cavities nothing but puncture cavity and catcher cavity okay so in the last class i have explained about the complete operation and working principle of this klystron amplifier this is the klystron amplifier construction di constructional diagram and here capital v naught this capital v naught refers to the dc supply capital v naught refers to the dc voltage that is used to energize the electron gun which is applied on the either plates of this cathode and as well as anode okay so this is the input cavity input cavity where we are applying the input voltage rf input voltage through a coaxial cable and uh, this is the output cavity we have taken the output from the rf output that is from the coaxial cable this is by the catcher cavity okay and uh, the electrons which are originated from this electron gun they will normally when there is no RF input voltage they are traveling with a constant velocity that is small v naught small v naught is nothing but velocity of electron travels from cathode to anode when there is no RF input voltage and next one uh, suppose when the RF input voltage is applied on this uh, buncher cavity what happens at this gap A, the electrons, three different types of electrons are going to be generated, reference electron, late electron, early electron, because of the three different positions of this RF input voltage, positive, negative and zero potential. So because of these three electrons, bunching, <coughs> electron bunch is created and that bunch amplifies the signal and goes to the at the gap B and it will come out from this RF output and nothing but uh, uh, from the catcher cavity. This is actually the process goes on in this uh, uh, klystron amplifier. Now let us calculate what would be the velocity of electron V1, velocity of the electron V1 when we are treating it as velocity of electron V1 when the RF input voltage is applied. Okay, before the application of RF input voltage that the velocity is noted as V0 but after the application of RF input voltage the velocity changes that is what the velocity modulation is. Okay, now we are going to calculate what would be the velocity of the electron V1 after the application of RF input voltage in this video. Okay, so let the DC voltage between cathode and anode the DC voltage between cathode and anode B capital V naught. So don't confuse capital V refers to the voltage, small v refers to the velocity here in our notations and small v naught be the velocity of electron when there is no RF input when there is no RF input and L capital L be the drift space length okay and the RF input signal to be amplified by the V naught okay so rf input voltage is amplified by the application of <coughs> the dc voltage v naught okay then what is the velocity v naught 
what is the velocity v naught v naught is nothing but velocity with which the electron travels before the application of rf input voltage so it is 2ev not by 2ev not by em under root 2ev not by m here v naught is the applied dc voltage m is the mass of the electron e is the charge of the electron and this is 2ev not by m okay now let us consider the velocity v1 when and that means after the application of rf input voltage okay excuse me so let small v1 be the velocity of <coughs> electron after the application of after the application of rf input voltage rf input and the rf input which we are applying is vs capital v yes nothing but this is the rf voltage we are applying okay radio frequency signal that is uh, as it is changing with respect to time nothing but we are uh, taking a sinusoidal signal so that's why it is a v1 sin sorry it is v1 capital v related to voltage v1 sin omega t1 okay so now the velocity becomes v1 is equal to 2e previously it was per v0 when there is no rf input voltage v0 is equal to 2e v0 by m so small v1 is equal to 2e v0 now it becomes v0 plus it is capital v0 nothing but applied dc voltage plus applied rf input voltage divided by m okay so this small v1 which is nothing but velocity of the electron after the application of rf input voltage is equal to 2e into previously it was v0 alone but now as the rf input voltage is applied vs will also be added vs by m okay so let us assume that the v1 is very small compared to v0 which v0 applied dc voltage is very very high compared to the amplitude of the sinusoidal signal okay suppose if you are taking any sinusoidal signal like this rf input voltage this is time and this is the amplitude we are talking about that is v1 okay this is capital v1 capital v refers to the voltage small v refers to the velocity remember okay so now v1 is equal to 2e substitute what is that uh, uh, v1 2e v0 plus v1 sin omega t1 divided by m under root that is equal to 2e take v not common by m into 1 plus v1 by v not sin omega t1 under root that is equal to See, separate these words 2EV naught by M under root into 1 plus V1 by V naught sin omega T1 whole power 1 by 2 whole power 1 by 2 ok so if you see this one you can uh, imagine something like a binomial expansion 
ओके वन प्लस एक्स ओल पावर वन बाय टू ओके वन प्लस सम एक्स ओल पावर वन बाय टू सो बायोनियोमियल एक्सपेंशन आफ्टर द एक्सपेंशन वी कैन नेगलेक्ट द हाईर आर्डर टर्म्स because v1 is very small compared to v0 that is the case we have assumed that v1 is very small compared to v0 okay so apply apply binomial expansion and neglect higher order terms neglect higher order terms then the velocity v1 becomes it is v0 see here what is this first term first term is square root of 2e v0 by m so this term refers to the velocity of the electron before rf input so it becomes a small v0 it becomes a small v0 so small v0 into 1 plus after this expansion and uh, neglecting the higher order term so v1 by 2 v0 sorry v1 by 2 v0 sin omega t1 sin omega t1 this is what the velocity of the electron with which it is traveling velocity of the electron with which it is traveling after the application of rf input voltage okay so if you take the sinusoidal signal and the calculation of distance between the points two points as the electron is traveling so consider this is sinusoidal signal and that axis represents the time on x axis and this is the voltage okay and this is the signal we have taken it as vs v1 sin omega t1 now take this instant as t naught where the electron starts its journey and goes up to the time t1 that means the distance traveled by this electron is something like d okay let theta g be the phase angle let theta g be the phase angle of the input signal input signal at which the acceleration of electron takes place then theta g becomes theta g is equal to angular velocity omega into angular frequency into time that is equal to omega into time is nothing but the time taken by the electron to travel from both the states nothing but from t0 to t1 so it is t1 minus t0 that is equal to you can write it as a distance by velocity so omega d by velocity v0 this is just normally the theta g for which the, the rf signal changes its phase okay so in this video we have seen the velocity of the electron with which it is traveling from cathode to anode after the application of rf input voltage and we have seen the phase angle of the rf signal okay in the next video i will explain the bunching process of the electron beam which is the continuation of this mathematical expressions a bunching process of the electron beam and we will calculate the drift velocity between buncher and uh, drift space between the buncher and catcher cavities okay thank you